And I appreciate all of you showing up. I appreciate you with my frustration last week. It was clearly apparent. Many of you reached out and were like, woohoo, the wrath of Brittany came out and it did. So needless to say, the beautiful thing is, oh my gosh, little Josie. Melissa Brewer has my little girlfriend, Josie. Oh, love and love her. Okay, squirrel. So needless to say, okay, we're going to do a mastermind today. Next week, we have Christina Delgado. The following week, we have a mastermind. And then the last week, we have Julie Voris. So we have four weeks left in this mastermind. That is it. After that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'll be completely bluntly honest with you. I need to find my passion and what I'm going to do next with this. So I will keep you all posted. Obviously, it will be after leadership, so don't fret. You're not going to miss anything. And I would just say this, because every time I do post, and I, I appreciate you all, you know, if you're driving or doing other things, I totally get it, but make the commitment. What I have realized in this position, and I'm not calling any one person out, but it is very notable and very noticeable, I would say, is so many of my coaches overpromise and underdeliver. Stop overpromising, stop underdelivering. So what I'm saying is if this is too much, just casually bow out, let me know. But if, if you overpromise and say you're going to be here, you're, you need to be here, okay? Expectation, just putting it out there. Um, and I'm great. Yeah, for, please do. Like it, I, I rather somebody say no, and it's the one, most liberating thing when you do learn to say no, okay? So if you have a hard time with it, please learn that word and use it when it benefits you. I have many coaches that said, you know what, this, it doesn't make sense with, for me right now and what I'm working towards, yada, yada, yada. And I get that. I respect that. Okay. So just a little bit of that. I do want to recognize though, I see Kate on here. Kate is a new five star. Miss Kate Morgan. Long time, long time coming girl. We are so excited to have you. And then where Emily we already celebrated you my lady a couple weeks ago you're welcome am I not seeing everybody who else is my new five star where are you maybe you're not on okay okay yeah where is she Oh, you know what? She's at her sister's wedding, but we do also have three more advancing this week. So we have so many new five stars. It's so freaking exciting. So, okay. Thank you for reminding me about Logan. Yeah. She's at her sister's wedding. Okay. So with that being said, I know Christy Lyons did ask what the topic is for today. And of course this call, I'm going to, I have a topic, but I first, and I want to say this, this is the topic that is on my head because we talk so much about diamond internship. We talk about getting our coaches to diamond. It's kind of that question of what next? Like meaning once they're to diamond and they do this internship and all the excitement and the growing, the progression, I would just love to hear, cause I have so many coaches that are actually really, really, really good at creating star diamonds. One specifically off the top of my head, Melissa Brewer. Um, I could call out so many people here. They get their coaches at least to one star diamond, hopefully two star diamonds so that they're opening a second CBC. But if you have a system that works to get your coaches to star diamond and above, will you please share that right now? Will you unmute yourself, please? Um, since you called me out. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just say, and I look really awesome today. I had to literally run my kids this, the first day of school because we were running late. So that's just how it is nowadays, right? Um, I don't know if I have like a system. I'm not a systems person. So if you are like share that because I could probably use it. But what I do and what I know like all of our team does is we just teach our coaches to do what we're doing. Like if they have the example in front of them and if they're doing the work that we're doing, then chances are they're going to follow the same progression that you're following. So whenever I'm doing something, I tell my team exactly what I'm doing so then they can do it in their way. Like they, they're not copying me. They're not like using my words but they know, okay, these are all the groups Melissa's running. These are the like call to actions she's using. These are the sneak peeks she's doing. And I know this is probably a little off the grain of like what most of the leaders are doing where they're running their own sneak peeks and they're not letting their team, they're making their team do their own. I actually have my team do them with me and we each have 
a specific topic that we talk about. What I like about that is we have a huge sneak peek that we just use over and over again. So all of these people are seeing every single person on our team talking about what we love about coaching and it kind of fits in one of like the different aspects. So like one of, um, one of the coaches will go on and talk about like what a day in the life of a coach looks like. So we have a girl who works full time and she talks about what it looks like for her. We have a girl who does it full time. She talks about what it looks like. So we're touching all these different things and they see our entire team and how united we are and that we're like a family. And that's what I like that. Those are the type of coaches I'm looking for. So the other leaders who are just doing it all on their own, that's great. I think that works for them. But the type of coaches I'm looking for are the ones who want to be a part of our community, who want to be a part of our family and who want that responsibility. So I think growing star diamonds, like helping them to develop diamonds and, and eventually they're going to have to branch out on their own. But right now they feel the fam familial unit, like they feel that connection and those are the type of coaches that they're bringing in. And then eventually they'll go off and do their own sneak peeks and have their coaches contributing and talking and having that responsibility, which then leads to them growing diamonds and hitting more stars and whatever. So that's just what I've done. That's what I've found works really well for us and like my vibe. And I know there are different ways, but thought I'd share. You rock. Thank you. And I appreciate you allowing me to call you out. Who else would like to go? So creating star diamonds. So we've gone through a diamond internship. We've gone through a diamond push and now we're creating star diamonds. Who are muted themselves? Speak. I did. I'm driving. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Melissa. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Sarah, you're good. Okay. So I've pretty much been in survival mode in my business for the last year working through this divorce. But now that I'm like finding my way again, um, I, my most recent diamond that's just popped, what I'm doing with her is, I get her in her other highest potential. Business working coach and a coach who just hit now at the same place as you because they're building their spouse. Who is Emerald just like you at the same rate as you. So you guys are doing two star together. And I kind of build that two star vision with both of them on the call because I think sometimes when people, yeah, they can see it as their coach hitting diamond as inspiring, but they can also be defeated. Like, why isn't that me? So instead of getting their mind in that path, I can bring them back and say, look, you guys are in this together. Like she literally has two coaches under her spouse's account and you guys are going to build this hand in hand, step by step. Like, so that's kind of worked for me in the past and what I'm doing again as well. Love it. Thank you. Who else? Something that really hit home for me I was just trying to think about like what it was for me to go diamond it wasn't so much the title or anything like that it was more the mindset and it clicked with me where we have all these pushes we have like get to diamond go star diamond and all that stuff but what I realized was the reason why it meant so much to me is because it was the type of people I could surround myself with it was the mindset it was the collaboration it was I wanted to be seating sitting at the table with the people who were building businesses that I craved. I wanted to be in masterminds with people like you guys, like be with all of you that are elevating yourself instead of playing it safe and small. And so that's how I've really been leading our team lately is it's so much, it's more of a mindset and who you get to be with versus this thing that we're pushing for. And I don't know why, like I haven't been doing that. It's just like get to diamond, but that's what it represents to me. But I really do think breaking that down of like, no, you don't understand like leadership being at leadership is so powerful. Like that was the reason I was like, I'm going to go elite again. Cause I like had that belief with all of you that were there. And then NLC, like that was Lauren, where are you at girl? Like, yes. Like I got to collaborate and meet people that are going so hard in this business because of what it represents. And so I think coming from a place like that is super powerful. And then on top of that, um, Trina is amazing. Trina Gray, we should definitely have her speak on here. I can ask her, but um, she just is everything to me. And she just says like, how did Carl build this company? Testimonials. He built it off of testimonials. So what I've been doing is creating so many testimonials across our team who was hesitant to get started. This was like Sammy's national wake up call. And I just put it into action. Again, it's not what we tell our people. It's what we show them. Right. 
So I um, asked like, who is a skeptic? Tell me why. And then how did you overcome it? And they were serious. They were like, I didn't want to put my social security number. And I was like, weird that you didn't question it as a nurse when you're starting that job, um, giving them your social security number. And we were putting this in graphics with pictures for Instagram stories and, and um, Facebook stories. So we have skeptics, people who weren't skeptics. Tell me your story. Um, we have uh, transformation in a phrase. Mine is couch to coach, bitter to better. Um, like, uh, painfully shy to fearlessly authentic is someone on our team. And so we're doing transformations in a phrase that represents them. And then it goes, meet Lisa. And then Lisa talks about how she was painfully shy to fearlessly authentic. And so what I figured is this whole company was built off of testimonials. We have so many on our team. Let's, let's bring it. And so we're doing that. I am um, thinking of other testimonials of like, how do you make this business work? with the jobs and roles that you have in your life. Are you a mom? Are you a teacher? Are you a nurse? How does this fit in? And so I'm just trying to think of all these graphics we can create to just keep putting on our stories. So that's what we've been working on because testimonials is how people will build their team. And um, so that's kind of backtracking with a game plan of recruiting is testimonials for us. So good. I love these, keep going. Hi, ladies. So for me, I actually don't develop a lot of PS diamonds really this year, but right now we're developing a lot of new star diamonds. I have a new four star, I have a new two star, I have another girl going three star. And so I've always been taught to create five, five stars, even if they're in my downline, and we're well on our way to do that. And one thing that I, not that this is new, but I personally have never done this before, so maybe you were in my shoes where like delegating tasks to up and coming diamonds or star diamonds, that was difficult for me because I'm kind of a control freak and um, my team is kind of a melting pot of personalities. We are not all the same. So it was kind of hard to jive with everyone. So I started doing what Trina Gray talked about at the summit uh, leadership session talking about doing, I call it a leader's corner call and they're allowed to bring a guest up. And that has allowed me to reach the depths of my downline because for me and my business, that's where a lot of my success comes from. So I know that a lot of this business is the recognition and popping your diamonds, but going deep in my downline has been the best thing that I've ever done. So don't be afraid to recognize people and pull them up for calls like that. Um, and we also, I, I make them talk on the call, even if they're new. So I ask them like, what's one thing you think that our team needs to change? Like what's missing? Because when we get this tunnel vision being, you know, in the business for so long and we've got some great insights, I ask them, what did you struggle with in your new coach training? What are some things that I can change? Or what did you miss in your first three months? Months. And just, I always go by John C. Maxwell's good leaders ask great questions. And I think giving the new and up and coming people a chance to speak and share has been huge. I feel like we've been popping a lot of the newer two star and above um, qualifications. So I just want to share, reach into your downline and find a way to work together with them. And I was afraid of what I needed to delegate to them because I really didn't know. I was new to that. And so just asking them those questions has been really helpful. And our team is, I feel like coming together in a big way. So that's my so, tip. Colleen, no, that's so good. I love that you invite them to bring somebody I love. So it makes me think of, and if you ladies have never heard of this book, but I was recommended it and I love it. It's kind of one of those feel good books. So sorry of a squirrel moment. If it relates, cool. If it doesn't wash it away. But the power of, or excuse me, oh my heavens, let me get the exact name. But it's all about creating moments and why, so for example, Colleen is creating those moments that are so meaningful, the power of moments. And basically what it, it, it talks about is how we create different moments within our life that stand out outside of like a birth or um, a holiday or a wedding or, you know, even there's peaks and there's pits, you know, divorces and so on and so forth. But I love if you can create moments, very powerful moments. I mean, Geek of Skywest or Southwest, excuse me, Southwest Airlines that creates those moments of humor and laughter. And if you can create that within your team, they're more opt to have a great experience and continue to show up. I love that you do that, Colleen. So no, that's so good. Um, and it made, it makes your coaches then also advance forward. So no, this is good. Okay. 
So that was a squirrel moment on the book I'm listening to. Love it. Okay. What else? Star diamonds. Building star diamonds. Um, I am not good at building star diamonds yet. Um, but I have a question for those of you who are, maybe this will help other people chime in. Um, for me, my team, I feel like anybody who signs up to coach and decides they want to coach, they do great and they become diamond. But my coaches have trouble getting any coaches. Like I have, I have some diamonds who have, you know, 25 active discount coaches in their organization, but they aren't like, and they're inviting to coaching. I mean, they say they are, and I know, you know, I, they said they kind of screenshot some of the conversations with me and stuff. And it's like, I don't really know how, I don't really know why no one is signing up anybody to coach. And I feel like if they could get someone who would want to coach, then they join our team. And like I said, when somebody signs up to coach, which it's usually somebody I'm sponsoring, um, usually so, sorry that you guys there. Sorry. I got a phone call and, and interrupted. Um, so they do great, but it's like my coaches have trouble recruiting any coaches at all. And I'm not sure what I can do differently to help them. So anybody, um, Great question, but I love that you turned it this direction. So please unmute yourself and help Miss Helen out. Can I chime in on that? And I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot today. I usually don't, but this is something that I have felt like I've worked with my coaches a lot on in the past, just couple of months. And I, I've seen it, a huge change in a few of them. So it might help relate to some of your girls. Um, I think that people recruit coaches with their confidence. And so I have really been working on instilling belief in my girls because they'll say to me, like, I'm in, I'm in such a funk or I'm in such a rut. I'm not recruiting right now. I'll say, well, how are you? Let's talk about how you're inviting. Oh, well, I haven't been because I've been just been struggling. Well, first of all, if you're not inviting, no one knows that you're bringing coaches onto your team. So you have to have the belief and you have to speak confidently Nobody knows if you're confident or not, but if you speak that way and if you manifest that into your business, you're going to attract what you manifest. So that has been a huge part of, I guess, the transformation of my coaches. Like I had a girl, she wanted to make it to a retreat. She's been struggling. She hadn't recruited coaches in a long time. She's been really focused on helping her coaches, but what she didn't see was she was um, not doing the things that she was trying to get her coaches to do. So you have to do that yourself. So instead I said, okay, you need to really start focusing on recruiting so that you can qualify for this retreat and help your coaches do the same. So she's going probably into two star qual this week because she recruited eight coaches last week alone. Like you have to just help them see the vision, talk to them like they are baddies, get them believing in themselves so that they speak confidently about the business and then attract those types of business builders into their own team. It seems simple. It's not really like as simple as I feel like I just explained it. It takes time to get them to over their limiting beliefs, you know, that like, but I'm not good at this. I haven't been recruiting. I haven't been doing this, blah, blah, blah. But I promise you it's worth the work. It's worth investing that time in your coaches and giving them that confidence to see them, them come out on the other side. And can I add to that? Um, I, I think that that's such a great point. And I've been talking a lot about this to my coaches. And I actually just spoke at a business conference about this. We're dealing with one of the most vulnerable aspects of people's lives. And you have to remember that when you go in to talk to a person, the, the verbiage that you choose portrays confidence or not. So if you come in, whether you're asking them to be a challenger in your group or a coach, if you come into them with, would you like versus, this is what we're going to do because this is what you need. It's, it's the difference in confidence. And, and I always tell people, look, you might have to fake it at first, but the more you do it and the more conversations, it becomes second nature. I don't even think about the fact that when I'm talking to people, I have, I, I ooze confidence and that's why I'm good at recruiting, but it doesn't happen overnight. Right. And so you just have to to breathe that confidence into them at first so that they realize like, look, this is a vulnerable area that you're going into and the way that you speak to people will, will determine the outcome. So. 
Ooh, this is good. And can I say this real quick? Write this down because this goes to Lauren and Melissa's point. People recruit diamonds with their confidence. Write that down. Remember that. Tell your coaches that. Okay, now who unmuted themselves? Go ahead, please. I just have one thing. So I come at it from like kind of a different way um, because I find that my coaches always make the excuse like, oh, I don't have any business builders on my team. Like I'm never going to get to start diamond. Like no one wants to get to diamonds. And so I always just like preach to them that like, you know, you can create your own two star, you can create your own one star, you can build two star, you create your own diamonds, so, like you can do all of that. And your entire business really like is in your control, right? Because like once you open that second CVC, like that's where your income grows. So having them in this mentality of like, I'm going to build my own two star and like along the way, I'm going to get coaches and if they want to work great, but if they don't, like, that's also great. Um, because I think that they can sit in the back seat and say, oh, well, I don't have any business builders. So, like I'm not going to be successful or like they get really down on themselves versus if I just like pour belief into them, like you're going to make yourself one star and then you're going to make yourself two star. And like, you're going to double your income once you open your second CBC and you don't need a single business builder on your team to make any of that happen. So, I mean, I don't have any star diamonds, so maybe I shouldn't be somebody that's speaking, but all of my coaches are literally on the brink of one star. And I think maybe three out of my 10 have like actual working business builders that are going to create that star diamond for them. And the other seven, like they've taken it into their own hands. Cause I always just preach to them. I'm like, guys, like this is your business. Like you can't just sit around and wait for somebody else to build your business for you. And I think that gives them so much freedom and belief that like, this is in my control. This is my business. I get to choose where I go um, from here. And I, it, it keeps them in that recruiting mindset. So they're still going to recruit coaches no matter what, but they're not going to like lean on like those coaches and hope that those coaches work a business that maybe they never want to work. And Carly will add to that. Like, don't yes. you feel like your coaches always do like half of what you do? So if you show them, okay, you know what, I'm going to get to two star and I'm doing this no matter if you guys are coming or not. And then they see you doing that. They're probably going to at least start to like put their butt in the gear. Yep, exactly. Like all my, all my coaches are, they're only diamonds, but, um, I'm like, guys, like no one's ever going to hit diamond. If you're sitting at diamond. like your coaches are only going to want to hit diamond. If you're one star, two star, because remember it's that rule of, yeah, people are going to do half of what you do. Carly, I just feel like now, because so Carly, and I will preach this over and over again is the co <laughs> creator. That, that's a good term. Co-creator of this diamond internship. And I feel like Carly, now you're on the brink of something new, meaning now it's a Star Diamond internship. So whatever that means, create it, please, because it's going to spread like wildfire and everybody's going to use it. Uh, but I feel like what you did for that Diamond internship, you can now duplicate it to create Star Diamond. And I love the mindset of, you know what, you don't need anybody to get there. I love the mindset of if you're going to create Diamond, you need to be higher, yada, yada, yada. I, I think this is the thing. It's the whole, you know, the confidence in what you can do next. So I'm excited, Carly, for what you can do because just a reminder, and I know she knows this, but, and I, many of you probably saw this, but she went into, into 10 star diamond qual last week. So what you're doing is working girlfriend. I will say that right now. Um, but now go perfect the star diamond and then give us your secrets. Let us know. Does that sound good? Okay. I wanted to add something. Um, yeah. so there's a million ways to grow this business and I have learned along the way that, the whole, I love sharing the business. My passion, if I could only talk about coaching and business and like forget challenge groups, I would be the happiest person ever, but I can't do that. Then I know there's people like one of my good friends, Christina Battaglia, she only does challenge group like invites all day long and that's where all of her coaches come from. So I think when we teach our teams how to recruit, we have to help them figure out what's their strength. Some coaches will never talk about the business opportunity. And at first I'm like, no, you have to, that, this is what I do. This is how I've grown my business. And then I forget that there's people out there that really drive the challenge group, um, you know, the experience, believing in the products, then inviting to coaching. So for those struggling to help their teams or coaches, maybe help them identify their, their strength in getting the challengers and then creating coaches that way or bringing them in with talking about the business or a blend of both. And I make sure to teach my team how to educate people on coaching because we can invite and recruit all day long, but if people don't understand what we're doing, some people do sneak peeks. I don't know if you guys have seen Brooke Lipoff. I always say her name wrong. Um, her video that she made, it's 11 minutes explaining coaching. That is my like glue to recruiting this month. It's amazing. I know you guys have talked about it a little bit, but if anyone missed it, I can share it. It's fabulous. 
Um, and it, I, I uploaded it to my Vimeo account rather than YouTube because YouTube shows like why I quit beach body video. So um, that has been awesome for my team because people want to know how we earn, how to get started. And I feel like my sneak peek took too long to get there. So this 11 minute clip has been awesome. And that has given my coaches the confidence to share and educate people after their invite. So Will you please share that video? Cause it is incredible. Yeah. Do you want me to share it in the mastermind group? What? Yes, please. Okay. That'd be amazing. Hey Colleen, I have a question regarding that. Cause I understand like the, you know, we all try these different things. Um, as far as that video, do you find, because sometimes I sent it, the video is phenomenal, but have you found that some people don't watch it because it's too long? Not no, I haven't yet. I mean, I've only been using it for the last, maybe not even four weeks yet. And I feel like my sneak peek where I did my story for 20 minutes and then someone else did their story. That's amazing. And it works for some people's personalities who want more info and more of the feels after they learn the basics. And so I tell people, I want you to start here. This is a really, I tell them a really quick 11 minute video. It's going to help you make a decision so that we can talk more about it. Why don't you message me after it's really old school network marketing message me after with any questions that you have. Um, and that has really worked for me. Awesome. So maybe just kind of instill it. It's a really short 11 minute video. I like that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to switch it real quick here. And I did prepare Kate. I did let her know that I was going to call her out so she doesn't have this like deer in the headlight look, but I just want to call Kate out. And I say this because, so Kate is obviously a brand new five-star diamond and she's ranked number 15 in the network. She's only been doing this business eight months. So I want her, it's just incredible. And how old are you? Please. Yes. Yes. Kate, how old are you? 24. Oh my gosh. I'm 10 years. I'm 10 years older than you. Do you realize that? Ah! All right. With that being said, will you please share a little bit about your story? And the reason I'm bringing her up first and foremost, she is that younger demographic. She is that dog mom, you know, she, her and Carly, I mean, and Cassidy, I'm trying to think of dog moms who do not have children. So there's a couple of you in here, cozy, Virginia, um, you know, that, that definitely are the younger crowd. And I would love for you just to share, will you give us a little bit about your story? Cause eight months into the business, five star diamond, you're going to meet all the elite qualifications this month since you now have officially hit five star. But will you tell us a little bit about your story and then just kind of how you have worked this business to be successful? Yeah. Now my heart's like racing. Cause so, I always get like <laughs> emotional when I talk about my story, but, um, so two years ago, like Curtis and I, Curtis is my fiance, we're getting married in like 28 days, which is like insane. Um, but we moved to California right after college, like from Colorado. And that's where we both grew up um, with like no rhyme or reason. Um, and also with only one job. So I was a first year teacher in LA. Um, teaching in the projects and then Curtis was trying to get into the police academy and so it was like a really stressful year um and during that year I got to my heaviest weight of 173 pounds and I'm five four and a half and it wasn't all muscle um so I really just like kind of stopped taking care of my body um I grew up like in varsity sports and like my undergrads in athletic training so I was always like fit but then once I started teaching I got um like burned out really fast. Um, and I became like extremely depressed. Um, just like riddled with anxiety. <laughs> um, and like one day I went to the doctor and this was in February of 2017. So like a year and a half ago, I went to the doctor and she told me I needed to lose at least 25 pounds to be like healthy. Um, which was probably true. I have like a history of heart problems. And so, um, I had to like keep control under that. Um, and so I told her like how much I hated my job, how I had an hour and a half commute one way I was teaching in the projects. Um, I was so stressed out and I felt like I didn't have time to work out. Sorry. There's like a trash truck outside. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, and she just like listened to me. But then when I was leaving the doctor's office, um, I looked at the patient summary form and it said, um, find a new job and take care of yourself. And that was like my moment of like, 
I needed to get my ish together. <laughs> um, and so I actually started scrolling Instagram and I found my coach, Ashley Feldison on Instagram. I found her on the explore page. It was a transformation picture and all I did was like it. I didn't follow her. I didn't message her. I didn't comment. All I did was double tap and kept scrolling. And so she showed up in my inbox the next day with an invite to her challenge group. And I signed up that day with a challenge pack. Um, I like did a month challenge group and like was kind of like dabbling in different workouts and stuff like that. I'm going to shut the window just because I can't hear myself talk. Whoa. Okay, that's better. Um, and so I like kind of was dabbling in different workouts, but I didn't really like commit to a program. Um, and so a month in, I hadn't seen results. And so I quit. And I um, stopped drinking Shakeology. I canceled my Shakeology account. I um, thought I canceled, like, all of my, like, I was a discount coach. I, like, canceled all that. Um, and I told Ashley, at-home workouts just don't work for me. And I was, like, addicted to quick fixes. Like, I was the type of person that would, like, not eat all day and then, like, binge at the end of the day because I was so stressed out and, like, forgot to literally eat all day because I was, like, running around like a crazy person. But then I would, like, feel guilty for eating ba bad food. And, like, it was just, like, this constant cycle. And so when I, like, tried working out and, like, sort of eating healthy for a month and it didn't work at home, like, I didn't think it would work. But I started watching my coach, like, for the next eight months. Um, and she was just, like, my friend. Like, she was always – I think that's something that I always try to, like, tell my coaches is, like, I had probably ten coaches reach out to me and ask me to be a coach during the eight months that I took a sabbatical from Beachbody. Um, and I always went back to Ashley because she was just my friend. Like, she would just, like, text me once in a while. Like, I got engaged. She congratulated me. Like – she was just like my person, like her and I are very close. Like she's a bridesmaid at my wedding um, and all this stuff. And so when I, I ended up finding a new job um, this last year in South LA and I was feeling like better, but I still felt like really stuck. Um, I still felt like there was this like hole and like I didn't, I was like missing something and I still hadn't lost the weight. And so I was really uncomfortable in my skin. Um, and now I was getting married. And so I wanted to like be healthy and happy on my wedding day. Um, and just like on December 1st, I was just like looked around my classroom and I was like, this is it. Like this is going to be my life for the next like 30 years. Um, and so that day I texted her and was like, I'm going to, I want to do this coaching thing. Like, tell me all about it and don't BS me. Like, is it actually legit? Like, do you actually make money? And like, I've been watching her and she had like quit her teaching job and like all this stuff, but I was skeptical. And I was like, I think I want to sign up because I want to be accountable for my own health and fitness journey. And I know that I will be if I'm like sharing it on social media. And so I signed up that day on December 1st. Um, and I just like, haven't like taken my foot off the gas pedal since. And I think like, I just started setting goals that like, I, no one told me like what wasn't obtainable. Like no one told me like, like it's not like, I don't know. No one told me I couldn't do something until like a month in someone was like, I was at success club, like 40 in my first month and I was just like cruising along like didn't think anything of it and then someone was like Kate's not gonna hit success club 30 plus every month. It's not sustainable. It's not possible like no one does that and ever since then like I came up with like the hashtag I didn't come up with it, but it's been my mantra hashtag watch me because then I just started using like negativity to fuel me and I just started like okay well if these people think that like I can't do it or they're gonna say like well, no one else has done that before. So like, it's pretty impossible. Like I'm going to try. And so I just always tell my girls like setting goals that stretch them. Because if you set a goal that scares you, or you set a goal that stretches you like you're bound to hit it faster than you were probably going to because you're scared to miss it. And you're going to work that much harder to go for it. Um, but I think what it comes down to is like, on December 1st, I made a decision that I was going to A, be successful in my health and fitness journey and B, like, see where this coaching thing went. And, like, since then, I've lost almost 30 pounds. And this, like, I retired from teaching. And so, like, 
it just comes down to like making that one decision that people are literally like one decision from changing their life. And I think like when it comes to like developing leaders and like diamonds, cause I have five diamonds on under me and then two under my fiance. And, um, I have two star diamonds, almost three. And I think what it comes down to is like, telling them like it, it's ultimately your decision. Like I'm not your boss and like I'm gonna support you and I'm gonna give you everything that you need to be successful. And like I'm very, very close with all my team but I'm also like, I kick them out of the nest pretty fast. Like I like will run a sneak peek with them and they'll be in my boot camp for the first month and then it's up to them to find a success partner and run them together. Um, and I think it just takes for my team, like it helps them because it takes ownership over their own business and ownership over their team. So they're recruiting to their team. Like they're coming up with team names and team pages before they hit diamond because they like are seeing that vision of like building their own empire. Um, and I think that's, what's so cool is like when I get added to these team pages and I'm like, what is this? And it's like a girl who's about to hit diamond and she just came up with her team name and she's like so excited to have a team page and she could have no working coaches under her, but she's like so ready to like build a business because like she now has ownership over that little piece. And I think for me, like that was what was so big is that like I could build something of my own. And so like, I just want to like have my girls do that as well. Sorry. I don't know why I cried so much. I'm apparently really emotional today. <laughs> never apologize. It's just really cool to hear. I mean, obviously the decision. Um, and I, I know you can relate with so many of my former teachers, you know, that are former teachers within this group. Um, so thank you for allowing me to call you out. But I think most importantly is the fact that you're not stopping, like you're a hard worker. And, I, and what I've realized, and I've worked with many of you coaches that go from full-time or part-time to doing this business a hundred percent. Um, have you found a groove in how to kind of keep, you know, to, remain sustainable while not working, not, not being a teacher? Yeah. I mean, it's been hard because I definitely think I was like more productive when I was a teacher. Um, like cause I only had like an hour or two a day. So it took me like a month or two to kind of find that groove. Um, but now I have like my morning routine. I have like, um, when I sit down and work and I like really, I literally like time block everything. Um, and that's helped a lot. And so, yeah, it takes a while to find the groove, I think, because like June was great, but July sucked because I like didn't have that groove. Um, but I think it takes a while, but it's like so worth it. Like I can't even imagine like being at school right now. So I just re think, remember, you know, Kate, remember your Carly, remember your young girls that, you know, that you may be, um, you know, these people may be connecting to you and, and, and it's a different, it's a different crowd because I mean, you're in a different area, era of your life. But I would just say, remember these young coaches that are, are really successful with this business and lean on them if you have questions, you know, um, cause we're all in different seasons of this business. I mean, and I think too, like I attract I don't know why, but I attract like a lot of moms on my team. Like all the coaches I signed up two weeks ago are like new moms. Like one of them had a, like babies. She just had her baby like three weeks ago. Um, you know, her, I have another one who literally had a baby three days after she signed up as a coach. And so like, I never, I never was like, I never thought I would be able to like attract like someone other than like a dog mom or like a teacher or like I had a really hard time like finding my niche. And I think sometimes when you don't have kids or like you don't like, I don't know, for me, I was telling Melissa last night, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I had kids so I could do this fun like thing I have in mind. Like, cause that'd be fun if I was like a mom, but like I can still like attract, you can still attract other people because you're not just a mom or you're not just a dog mom or I'm not just a law enforcement spouse. And so like when we think of like the, five things that make you you like I think it's kind of like bull crap because like those things are so surface level and so like I'm attracting people that like just want more like some like people that just want an outlet like maybe they don't want to quit their job but they just want an outlet or they just want to be able to stay at home with their kids or they just want something more to life and so I think that's really important like what I tell my girls like you're not just a teacher like you can attract other people too um if you look at like who you are as a person Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me call you out. I really appreciate it. Um, we have just a couple minutes left and I just want to ask, you know, what 
questions do you have for the large group? Is there something that maybe you're struggling with now? We only have a couple days left of the month. You know, it's, we're gearing up for September and a new season. I mean, it, so is there anything that you would, that is on your heart that you need to ask the large group where, with what you need help or maybe a best practice that you would like to share that's helping amazingly through the end of the month? This is your opportunity to share something or ask a question. Hey, can I circle back to Lauren, please? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. I love, sure next. Well, I love her. Like, she's just feisty. She's my kind of gal. Um, but I like what you said, because I, I like watching her live videos, because she's like, her Beyonce one was hilarious. But anyways. Um, Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I like what you said about um, when you do your inviting, and not like, would this be, but this is what you need. So kind of what is, can you elaborate on that just a little bit more? As yeah, so, like so what, what I do specifically, I, I go to groups that I'm either an admin of, because I, I keep all my groups. So I will go to them, and like right now, I'm about to do a, a high-fat, low-carb beta test group, and I'm requiring people to commit to 12 weeks and drinking vegan Shakeology every day, right? So I'm mm -hmm. literally going in there, I'm hovering over their name where I message, I type in their name, and then I go and I, I like, you know, Catherine, this is Lauren, uh, you know, I typically say, hey girl, hey, I don't know if you follow me or not, but I just want to make sure that you're not going to miss out on this opportunity that's coming up. Um, and, and I literally just talk with authority and let them know like, hey, there, there's a, a deadline coming up, but I, my own personal experience hearing my voice makes the biggest difference when i i've tried so many different ways of typing it out but when they hear my voice it's like it's just different and i think it's the confidence that they hear you Absolutely. Know? so so instagram needs voice messaging i no i agree that i i will send i i have better facebook works better for me i Instagram is just not my jam, um, but I do DM people on Instagram and I will send them videos just because I hate typing out. I'm, <laughs> when it comes down to it, I'm just too impatient to type out everything. And it's just, it's easier and more personable, but, but the way in which you speak to them I is love it. Really, okay. It's, Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Teresa, you wanted to go, hun. Actually, Lauren actually answered my question. And so I have not... I just got told by somebody in my downline to start sending message, like video messages on Instagram. And I was like, I've been trying to think like, if somebody random sent me a message on Instagram and they sent me a video, like that would kind of freak me out <laughs> a little bit. But I wanted to hear what every, if anybody else was doing it, but apparently that's something like, um, instead of sending like the script, hey, thanks for following me, I have a boot camp. They said that they were sending messages, like video messages. So I just wanted to, but as everybody ever answered that, I think that's kind of the, what, what I found is that if, if a person's getting a video message from me or audio message at first, it kind of takes them back, but it, it creates interest. And so mm -hmm. if they don't say yes to me right then, um, they're going to go and follow my page. And I, I mean, I legit found that connecting with them on inbox, either Facebook Messenger or DM, they like, I see them liking my post. I see them commenting. I will mm -hmm. go in because I've got, I've maxed out on friends. So I will go in and go to birthdays and I'll do this once a week and I'll just send a Facebook message to someone has nothing to do with Beachbody. Mm -hmm. Hey girl, I just saw your birthdays today. Want to make sure that, that say, you know, happy birthday. Hope you have a beautiful day. Much love Lauren. And sure enough, I will see them liking my posts. These are people that, you know, either I've connected with them in the past or they're just my friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But just making that connection, that real, you know, like, hey, I'm not just, you know, a, a person on Facebook. Like, I'm a real person. And, mm -hmm. and that creates the interest. So mm -hmm. if they don't say yes at that point, typically they say yes down the road. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? What? Let me ask one last question. Who has had major success helping their coaches hit success club the last couple of days? And will you just share what you have been doing? Okay. I have to share this because I'm like mind blown. Please. So like a week ago we had probably like six people in my entire downline at success club. And I was like, what is happening? Like, Obviously, August is hard, especially because I have all teachers, and so, like, everybody's going back to school and, like, getting their classrooms ready, and, like, they're spending money on their classrooms, and, like, their whole market is teachers, and so it's definitely been tough, um, especially when that's most of my people's market. 
So I was like, what can I do that like will give them just like, I don't do incentives. So I never do like success club prizes. I never do like anything like that. But I was like, I'm going to try it this month because I never do it. So maybe they'll take me seriously and like do go for it. Um, now I have 20 people in my downline at success club five or higher in like the last week. And there's like 10 at four. And so personally sponsored coaches, I have 10 at success club, which like isn't a lot in a big organization, but like for me, that's like the highest I've ever had. No, Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Keep going. Okay. (laughs) Well, I have 10 personally at success club and then I had, um, a bunch of in my downline. Um, and I just did, which I'm like kind of regretting it now. Cause I'm like, crap, now I need to f- foot the bill. Um, but I did B brand headbands and then like the success club 10 people could choose between a girl boss tank from B brand or, um, B brand headband. So like, I don't know what it was, but, or if it was like, we also did like a, the flash sale, but, um, all of a sudden they just decided to work and like they, I've never had this many people at success club 10. We have 10 people at success club 10 or higher. And I have three that are above 20 and I've like never had that before. And so, um, I don't know what happened. They weren't there a week ago. Um, but I also started doing team power hours cause I was, I asked them, what do you need? Like, I was like, our success club board looks sadder than it's ever looked. And I'm also like very tough love, but then I'm like, what can I do to help you guys? Like what can I do or implement in the team that will help you guys stay accountable or like get your invites out or whatever. And a lot of them said team power hours. So I started running, I've done a team power hour almost every day at five o'clock. And like if people show up, they show up, but I noticed the ones that are showing up, they're the ones that are climbing the board. So team power hours have helped them a lot. And then those incentives definitely helped. You rock. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that was a consensus yesterday when I asked, like, what are you going to do? Majority said flash sell, which I love that. And just remember, do it wisely. Jemima is watching it like a hawk. Whew. Also, um, dangle the carrot. If your people are not white personalities and they, like, if you dangle the carrot in front of me and said, do this, you get this, I'd be like, oh, hell yeah. What do I need? Like, I'm that, you dangle the carrot, I'm after it. Um, so if your people accept that, run with it. And then obviously, um, Kate, you'll get to the point where you'll find different things that maybe won't be so expensive, but maybe, you know, you'll, you'll learn. But I would just say if, if you dangle the carrot and it works, definitely do it. Um, yeah, no, this is good. Okay. Is there anything else And I would also say that a lot of um, coaches, and I remember Christy Lyons saying this the last, you know, four days of the month of doing live power hours. So I love that you're doing that, Kate, every single night. Like, get in the group, teach them the activities. And I think it's just a reminder, you know, it's Labor Day weekend this weekend. You know, I, which is crazy, we have Friday off and Monday off, which... I'm not complaining. We never have a Friday, Monday off together. Um, but people are going to be on vacation. So it's what you do right now to really sum up the month. But then just a reminder, the working hard will help them the first of September. And I don't know if it's, if, if it's just me, but I'm excited for this next season. I'm excited for the cooler weather. I'm excited to get more committed to my goals that I want to accomplish by the end of the year. Okay. So I, I would just say, just start looking forward and saying, okay, these activities, yes, we're summing up August, but most importantly, we're creating September. Like, what are we going to do and have that on the forefront? You know, that's the hard part about sales. It's like one month ends and it's, you're right to it, but you know what? That's why all of you are in this business is to help people, to make them successful and to make yourself successful. So just keep talking about it, find what's working, share it within the groups. I really appreciate your participation today and questions. Um, if, any, if there was something that maybe you weren't able to ask or share, never feel like you can't. Obviously put it in the message thread. I just want to remind you um, that next week, like I said, we have Christina Delgado. That will be a really incredible one. Be on time, please. We will jump right into that. That will be an hour. The next one we will mastermind. It will be our last mastermind of this quarter. And then we have Julie Wars the following. So really utilize this group, the women in it. I love you a long time. Let me know if you need me or let me know if you, yeah. Anyways, I think that said it correctly, but I adore you and I appreciate you for showing up. Um, I will talk to you all very soon and have an amazing day. Okay. Bye ladies. Thank you for your participation.